The American eel has declined in abundance over the last several decades. Scientists are seeking to understand why the decline has occurred and what can be done to restore eel abundance. Declines may be linked to changes in oceanic currents, habitat losses, commercial fishery exploitation, and mortality experienced by migrants at in-stream barriers, such as hydroelectric facilities. The Electric Power Research Institute-led Eel Passage Research Center is conducting research to address one of the factors potentially affecting eels, turbine mortality at hydroelectric projects. The downstream passage, especially at large stations, is problematic. So what we're trying to, to do here is develop a way to direct the animals so that we can capture them efficiently and then move them downstream past the impact and they can continue on in their migration. We know once they, we move them downstream, they're fine. They'll migrate. There's, physiologically, there's no issues. Research related to the upstream passage points to troubling trends in eel abundance and the need for more extensive work addressing the downstream passage. I've been involved in the eel ladder project since the mid-90s. And uh, at that point, uh, the eel ladder numbers had already declined dramatically from you know, their peak in the early 80s. There was an average of over 800,000 eels a year migrating upstream. And during the late 90s, it went down to a matter of two or 3,000 eels a year. So that's a 99% decline. Numbers have thankfully increased a little bit since that time, uh, but still we're, we're far below where we'd like to see the numbers. Eels are ecologically important. They provide food for humans. They are a top predator in freshwater streams. They are prey for other species. And because they are long-lived, they can serve as a bioindicator for pollution within an ecosystem. As adults, American eels are found in freshwater and estuaries from South America to Greenland. And yet they are a single breeding population, converging to spawn in the Sargasso Sea in the Western Atlantic Ocean. Because their spawning has never been observed in the wild, important unknowns remain. The young produced by the spawn migrate back to continental waters. Eels that migrate upstream of hydroelectric projects must successfully pass downstream of those projects in order to complete their life cycle. The, the eels that come here to Lake Ontario are at the most extreme of the range. They're almost four or 5,000 kilometers from the Sargasso, their spawning ground. And so it could be um, there are issues uh, as the density, for example, of eels gets lower, they're less inclined to travel as far because they don't need to go as far to find um, key habitats. And so uh, federally, we're trying to figure out why eels here have declined and they haven't uh, throughout the rest of Canada. Well, I, I think um, the Power Authority is, has kind of furthered the research on, on understanding eel migration, definitely upstream, and uh, touching it the downstream eel dilemma. There's not a lot of technology out there to figure out how we can pass eels safely around the dam. Our light study and a telemetry study has brought us some understanding of that issue. And I think that's at least a stepping stone towards what this EPRI Eel Passage uh, Research Center is it's going to be looking at. Taking our study results further and trying to figure out, okay, what, what can we do in a large river system like this? The uh, Eel Passage Research Center, for the first time in many years, is providing an opportunity for both nations and agencies and hydropower uh, generators to come together and to collectively uh, work together to start addressing uh, the issues with upstream and downstream passage of American Eel and trying to improve the number of eels that are making it back from Lake Ontario to uh, the Sargasso Sea to spawn and complete their life cycle. This is um, uh, clearly a topic that is at the interface of, um, of environment, environmental impact, and power generation. And um, it, it uh, is an issue for power generation companies that power companies are tackling this to address their public interest, resource management obligations, and regulatory uh, compliance obligations. The, the decline of the European eel, of course, is paralleled by the decline of the American eel, the Japanese eel, and various other eel species around the world. So our uh, lack of understanding of why these populations are collapsing uh, is one that brings us together as scientists from different parts of the world, uh, and uh, there are lessons to be learned from, from each other's research, and that's why uh, I think uh, the North American eel researchers will benefit from 
uh, collaboration and into uh, action with the European researchers and vice versa. And, and so that, that's why I think it's of importance to look at it from a global rather than uh, a national or a single river basin uh, perspective. We're still trying to answer a lot of the basic questions. So uh, as, as we get more information, I'm sure the, the mystery will you know, continue to unfold. That's, that's the way most species are. I mean, we've always learned something new about these species every day. With this collaborative, we have the um, uh, resources and the expertise to make real progress towards addressing this, this challenge. Um, but it is a significant challenge, and um, it's going to take a while.